What's going on everybody? Good morning, good evening, wherever you are, and whatever time it is. And welcome back to yet another video with you, man, Immersion Holic. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my guide to the newly added wonders to the Divided to Para Overhaul mod for Total War Rome 2. That's right. DEI is getting wonders added to it. It kind of did already have wonders added in. They were like regional effects before, but now they are entirely their own unique buildings with their own unique traits and massive buffs that your empires do receive. There is a total of 14 wonders, so I will leave timestamps down below in the description so you can just hover over the video and see which kind of wonder you want to look for if you are coming here just to check out a specific type. Uh, there is currently a total of 14 wonders added into the game as far as I'm aware. Um, there are some unique ports added in, but I'm classifying the unique ports as something different to the wonders and they basically are a separate thing anyway so if you guys like I could do a video covering all of the unique ports in the game though they get all of their own cool little little uh, buffs debuffs and abilities but for now this will just cover the wonders added into the grand campaign revised sub mod beta that is currently live for the divided to para mod so these wonders are currently not in DEI they are in a DEI sub mod that will 100% be added to the grand campaign of DEI eventually um, probably by the end of this year I would imagine I'm not entirely sure on specifics but it will be added in so this is something you absolutely do need to know if you are interested in finding more about the wonders that will be coming in DEI so anyway ladies and gentlemen timestamps will be down below and by the way I want to give a quick shout out to my man summary for helping me out a lot in tracking down all of the wonders i had found a fair few of them however uh him coming along with his god tier maps he was absolutely vital in helping me track down all of them at least all of the ones that have been added so far if you're watching this in the far off feature there might have been more wonders added and of course because this is just a beta there are effects that are possibly up to being changed as feedback and time goes on so uh if again if you're watching this in the future there may be some minor changes, so you do need to be aware of that. But anyway, let's get started by checking out a bit of a classic wonder, and that is, of course, Stonehenge. Now, because I'm using a cheat mod to let us see the entire Grand Campaign map, uh, we can just fly around to all of the cities right now and check them out, so we will be doing that. However, I also want to state that for this guide, I'll be going over where you can find these wonders, all of the effects for the highest tier of the wonder. I won't cover every single tier of every wonder because that would be way too long, but I will cover basically the best that each wonder can get. Uh, additionally, I'll also be letting you know what faction owns what wonder on turn one and basically just where you can find these wonders. So anyway, like I said, starting off with Stonehenge, we go to the city of Iska in the province of Britannia. Iska is on turn one owned but a dumb Noni tribe, or Noni tribe, however you wish to pronounce it, uh, or the dummies, as I like to call them. <laughs> but anyway, um, basically, Stonehenge is its own building, as is all of the wonders now. They are not just a, a, a little thing on the side of your screen, a province effect that affects the area. Um, instead, they are actually a building inside of the settlement, and they even have their own unique building card, and so they'll be very easy for you to identify. So let's go in here check out the highest tier of Stonehenge it only has two levels the highest tier is restored Stonehenge and this gives us 600 wealth from entertainment in your culture plus 15% civil research rate plus 600 wealth from local commerce minus 6% public order penalties due to local presence of foreign cultures in all of your provinces so that's nice plus 30% wealth from culture in all regions plus 20% wealth from agriculture, and plus 0.5% to your first and second class social growth, which is actually pretty substantial and very helpful for you in obtaining those elite tier units. But anyway, that's it for our first one. 13 more to go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's keep going. So for number two, we come across the channel and get into Gaul. And this is up in northwestern Gaul, otherwise known as Brittany. And we have the city of Namnetum. And Namnetum is owned by the Namnetes or Namnets. However you want to pronounce it, I'm sure I nailed it. Um, and they have 
these stones of Karnak. You can even see the stones right here on the Grand Campaign map, which is really cool. I think you can see all of these wonders on the Grand Campaign, or at least most of them. So that's a very nice touch. I really love that. Um, but these guys, again, they only have two tiers. But for the restored stones of Karnak, the second tier of these stones, you get plus five growth per turn for all provinces. Very powerful buff to have there. 600 wealth from entertainment in your culture, plus 15% military research rate, plus 7 to your Celtic cultural influence, which can be an issue if you're not of a Celtic culture, obviously, uh, plus 20% wealth from culture in all regions, plus 20% wealth from industry, and plus 0.5 to your first and second class population. So very similar to Stonehenge, um, and it's basically giving you nothing but buffs except for that Celtic uh, addition that you get to your culture which like I said if you're not part of the Celtic culture in your faction and it could be a little bit of an issue for that region but it shouldn't be too much. Um, Nemnidum is of course in the province of Galia as well and like I said it is owned on turn one by the Nemnites um, but that's basically all you need to know about it. Let's jump on to number three. So for number three we jump all the way over here to Daisha and in Daisha in the city of Zombie Zegatusa I'm sure I did that perfectly too. We have Koge Onon, or Koge Onon, however you wish to say that as well. The Holy Mountain of Zalmoxis. Uh, this is another tier 2 wonder that you get, and this is very cool because not only does it give you wealth once again, 600 wealth from entertainment, but it gives you plus 20 line of sight across borders, which is very cool and a very unique trait to have. I've never seen that actually for any kind of city. Uh, thing given to a building city attribute I guess we then get plus 8% morale for all units in all armies very nice plus 30% wealth from culture in all of your regions plus 3 uh, siege holdout time and then plus 0.5 to your first and second social classes again a very nice population touch to have um, it is owned initially on turn 1 by the Apulii tribe uh, like I said in the province of Dacia um, very cool uh, little wonder to have and it is the first wonder we've seen so far that is actually inside of a capital city of a province so that is uh, important in that it allows the wonder to be protected and can we see it on the grand campaign map perhaps this is it over here it's hard to tell because we have all of these mountains out here I'm sure people more versed in the history of the area and the wonder can see it but I don't see anything inside of the city I'm assuming it has something to do with like the mountains up here or maybe this little outcrop right there. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. Hmm, it's probably me just being an idiot and missing it. So feel free to correct me in the comments guys and I'll be sure to favorite it so other people can see. But anyway, now let's move on to wonder number four. So for number four, we come to the city of Deva. That's right, we are now in Thrace. This city is initially owned by the Tolisto Bogai, 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 however you want to say that. Um, basically, this is owned by a Celtic faction. At least I believe they're Celtic, right? They should be. Oh, yeah, I think they're the only Celts here. And then there's Dacians up here. Yeah, Dacians up there. Or Dacian, Thracians, Thracian, Thracian, and then uh, Dacians up here. Um, so, basically, anyway, uh, the city is Palpadeva, and here we have the Sanctuary of the Great gods how badass does that sound we can actually see the city i mean see the building inside of the city there very cool and it's nice that it stands out and it's very obviously greek style uh of building compared to the um barbarian uh settlement that it's located in uh although i am using hd cities uh in this overview right now but it shouldn't be affecting that at all it is a barbarian city on turn one so that's why we're seeing it like that so the effects that this wonder provides is, once you get it to the restored sanctuary of the great gods, you have plus 3 growth per turn for all provinces, plus 5 sanitation to regions in this province only, 600 wealth from entertainment, plus 4 to your owning faction's cultural influence, plus 20 wealth from culture in all regions, and plus 0.5 to your first and second class population. It'd be very nice if it specified if that population growth was in all of your cities, or is it just in all of the cities of this region? Uh, I mean, of this province of Thrace, or is it only in Polpadeva? That would be very good to know, to be honest. Um, but it's just a little minor UI thing uh, that would be nice to see be changed in the future. I love that you can see it on the Grand Campaign map, 
Um, but anyway, I'm pretty sure that's all we have to say about it. So let's move on to wonder number five. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving all the way down into Greece, and we have a few over here in Greece, so let's try to do a bunch of them all at once. So first up, in Sparta, obviously owned by the Spartans on turn one, we have the statue of Zeus at Olympia. Uh, you can see it right here on the Grand Campaign map, and it is actually part of a battle map as well, so you can have a really cool, uh, interesting battle if, for whatever reason, you're fighting out here just outside of Sparta. Um, this only has two levels once again but it has a solid list of benefits starting once again you uh, get it to the restored statue of Zeus at Olympia so uh, restoring the wonders is obviously a major theme for a lot of these factions so far uh, it won't be like that for every single one but for a lot of them it is here we see 600 wealth from entertainment to your due to your culture uh, that seems to be a trending pattern nice to have that solid 600 booster to your income very very nice we then see a plus 15% uh, to your military research rate, plus 30% wealth from culture in all regions. It should be in all regions that you own it, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, we have to go with the UI on that, so I'm going to be trusting that. Plus 20% wealth from industry, minus 15% land unit recruitment costs in all armies, so that's super nice. Bread and Games Edict, plus 10% wealth generated by cultural buildings, another very nice buff to have. And again, the 0.5 first and second class social uh, class increase. However, uh, that plus 20% wealth from industry, I'm not sure if it's just for this city or if it's for all of the cities in this region or for all of the cities you own. When it doesn't specify that it's in like all regions or something, I would assume it means only in this city. So that's what I'm going to go with for now because that's a safer option. If it's more than that, then that is a very nice plus though. But anyway, now it's time for us to go east of Greece and take on number six and number seven in our wonder list. So first off at Ephesus, we have the Tomb of Mausolus. Uh, this is another tier two wonder, the Great Mausoleum of Halicarnassus. Uh, I'm sure, once again, I'm nailing these names, man. I'm on point tonight. <laughs> I'm really not. I'm sorry, guys. Please forgive me in my butchering. Um, but this is very interesting because we see something a little bit different. We see minus 15% construction cost in all regions. That's a pretty big uh, buff to building buildings. So that's really nice. Helps you, uh, especially early on in the campaign when you're building up the province. So that will help you out there. 800 wealth from entertainment. So that's a big increase instead of just 600. It's 800, almost 1,000. Plus 30% wealth from culture in all regions, plus 20% wealth from industry, plus 7% tax rate in all provinces. So that means all provinces in your empire, if it's saying all provinces like that. And then we have again the plus 0.5 first and second class for your social class. And of course, it is owned by Lydia on turn one. Um, but yeah, you can find it in the city of Eph Ephesus, it is in the province of Asia. As is the next wonder, which is at Rhodes, of course. Now, Rhodes obviously has the Colossus of Rhodes. Oh, by the way, the Tomb of Masolos, Mas Masolos, or the Wow, I can't even pronounce that word for crap. Um, but anyway, it is inside of the city here, I believe, or is that it out here on the little archipelago? It might actually be that right there. I thought it was the building inside the city right there, but looking at this building now. It must be that, because that building shouldn't be anything else. Hmm. Yeah, no, it looks like it. Looks like the unit car, like a little bit of a square building on top of it. So I'm guessing this right here is the wonder. But anyway, we could also, of course, see the Colossus of Rhodes, which is just in the harbor of Rhodes itself. Um, the Colossus of Rhodes has two tiers to its leveling. And once you restore the Colossus of Rhodes, you get 800 wealth from entertainment due to culture, plus one fleet recruitment capacity, faction-wide. That's really, really nice. Helps you really dominate the ocean when you control the city of Rhodes. Um, by the way, remember, all you need to do is control the city in which these wonders are located in. You do not have to be the faction that starts out with it. So that's one thing to uh, note for sure. Uh, I thought that was obvious, but perhaps I should have included that early on. Um, but anyway, you also get plus 20% wealth from culture in all regions, plus 20% wealth from all commerce, 
minus 30% naval unit recruitment cost, which is a whopper. That's really, really big. You'll, you'll probably be wanting to recruit your navies in Rhodes based off that alone. And then you again have that 0.5 first and second class bonus to your social class growth there. Um, and this is, of course, controlled by Rhodes on turn one. And again, in the province of Asia. Now, though, let's go to Wonder number eight. Now, for Wonder number eight, we come down to Libya, just west of Egypt. And in Libya here, it's quite literally the province of Libya. In the city of Ammonium, we have the Oracle of Amman, which you can see over here on the Grand Campaign map, looking very badass. I would love to know if that's actually part of a battle map. Uh, we have two levels of it. Once again, you just have the standard uh, edition of the Wonder, and then you have the re restored version as well. Uh, you will note, though, that these restored versions do have a technology requirement. It's not really that much of a big deal, uh, but it is worth uh, noting if you're in a big rush to try and restore your wonder as quickly as possible. But the restored Oracle of Amon gives us plus four public order per turn in all of your provinces, 600 wealth from entertainment uh, due to culture, minus 15% resistance to foreign occupation. That's a big one, especially if it's faction-wide, which I would hope that it is, although I'm not entirely sure. It might not be, actually. It might just be for this uh, city in particular. Then we have plus seven Egyptian cultural influence, which can become a problem if you're not Egyptian, uh, plus 20% wealth from culture in all regions. And then once again, we have that 0.5 increase to first and second class citizens. Um, but yeah, that's it. And you can get it in the province of Libya. Um, on turn one, like I said, it is located in the city of Ammonium, but on turn one, it is owned by Egypt. Uh, this is not an independent city. This is owned directly by the Ptolemies and the Ptolemies are very unique because they have a bunch of wonders They have the most of any starting faction in the game on turn one and they have three And so right now that we've covered number eight, let's go to nine and ten over here in uh, Egypt itself So for number nine, we have of course the Pharos of Alexandria otherwise known as the Lighthouse of Alexandria now this is a very well known wonder and of course it's going to give you some very nice benefits to Alexandria. So when you get the restored Pharos of Alexandria building, you have 800 wealth from entertainment due to culture plus 20 line of sight across borders which is very nice. Uh, we're seeing that buff like we did uh, for the Dacians up in the north. We see plus 30% wealth from culture in all regions plus 20% wealth from maritime commerce which is a biggie. Because Egypt starts off with this city obviously being um, the capital, they get a lot of trade flowing through here, so that's massive. They then get the strategic port of Alexandria buff, which gives you plus 7% tariff income from trade, and that's faction-wide. That's not just for Alexandria. That's for any port uh, that the trade comes through in any kind of land route as well, so that's very nice. And then, of course, once again, we have that standard 0.5 increase uh, to the first and second population social classes and that's not 0.5 as in like 500 or 50 or anything uh, like 500 men or whatever that is just a percentage that you get it as I uh, just wanted to point that out there um, but anyway now we go on to number 10 which is of course in Memphis in the province of Egyptos by the way uh, we have the pyramids of Giza um, obviously you can see these bad boys on the uh, campaign map just like you can the Lighthouse of Alexandria. Um, this is obviously one of the most, if not the most well-known wonder in the game. And the buffs you get definitely reflect that. You get a whopping minus 15% construction costs in all regions. 1,000 wealth just from entertainment due to culture alone. Plus 30% wealth from culture in all regions. Plus 20% wealth from agriculture. Plus 7% to your tax rate in all provinces. And then the standard plus 0.5% to your first and second social class uh, of your population. That is a biggie. Obviously, these wonders are owned by Egypt on turn one, as is uh, the Oracle of Amon, is it? Yes, yes, Oracle of, of Amon to the west over here as well. So that is all three wonders that Egypt get on turn one. Now though, we come to number 11 in our list. We only have three more after this, and this is of course in the city of Marib, in the province of Arabia Felix, we have the Great Dam of Marib. This is 
uh, a little bit more of a well-known wonder because it is a pretty big effect for the Arabians here and this is of course owned by the Saba on turn one uh, I will be talking about these guys in a faction overview soon too so you'll be seeing me talk about this dam uh, and this dam actually has three tiers added to it uh, it is not just the standard two tiers and additionally we also see a pretty massive debuff that this wonder uh, enforces upon your faction now for the grand dam of Marib the highest level that this dam can get which is uh, the third level we have eight sanitation to regions in this province so that's all of the cities inside of Arabia Felix we then have minus 1200 wealth for maintenance that is massive that is a really big hit to your income at least for the early game it is a uh, late game it doesn't mean anything really um, but early to mid game you might really want to not rush and try and upgrade this wonder because that is a massive hit to your income however it does provide a plus four growth per turn in all provinces which is really big and it also gives you plus 12 percent wealth from agriculture in all of the regions of this province and then you get plus 0.7 percent to your first and second social classes so that's actually a little bit different um, obviously this wonder is much more focused on growth and allowing agriculture to thrive in your region which is very fitting of course at least it is in my opinion so uh, that is it for uh, the great dam of Marib now let's go on to number 12 so for number 12 we come to the city of Seleucia the city of Seleucia is in the province of Mesopotamia and it is of course owned by the Seleucids on turn one of the grand campaign now inside of the city of Seleucia we have the wonder known as ancient Babylon uh, Seleucia is basically built on top of Babylon and so we have the wonder here we have the restored ancient Babylon uh, level that we get to it's only two levels once again and here we see another nice boost to your growth where we see plus three growth per turn in all of your provinces plus five sanitation to all regions in this province so all of the cities in this province have uh, plus five sanitation very nice 800 wealth from entertainment uh, due to culture plus 15 percent civil research rate plus seven to your persian cultural influence which again can be an issue if you're not persian uh, then you also have plus 20 percent wealth from culture in all regions uh, in this province then you have plus 20 percent wealth from culture in all regions it doesn't state in this province though, so i'm guessing that is applied to every single city on the map that's interesting that can be really really powerful and then it has plus 0.5 percent to your first and second social classes a very powerful wonder gives you some nice boosts indeed um, and it's located inside of a capital city so it's very defendable um, just like it is though for alexandria that also has them in a uh, capital city as well for the lighthouse of or the pharos of alexandria but anyway and that's it for uh, wonder number 12 now let's get on to number 13 and so from wonder number 13 we go east from Seleucia over here to the city of Parsa once again another capital of a region the city of Parsa is located in the province of Parsa and it is owned by the people known as Parsa that's the name of the faction so we have three Parsas basically getting involved with this wonder on turn one um, this is the Nakshi Rostam necropolis the resting place of the great Persian kings uh, this does only have two tiers though once again it has the restored level and the restored level provides plus 15 percent to your research rate which I'm assuming applies to your military and civil uh, research rate because it just says research rate not a uh, specific type of one we then also have 600 wealth from entertainment due to culture plus seven Persian cultural influence plus 20 percent wealth from culture in all of your regions minus 50 percent land unit recruitment costs in all armies and plus 0.5 to your first and second social classes uh very nice uh buff to your land unit recruitment costs uh, minus 50 percent that's really big uh very nice wonder indeed you can see it up here just above the city of parasa uh by the way for babylon you can see the hanging gardens wonder i believe this is supposed to be it down here in the south because it's known just as the as ancient Babylon so yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it down here um, but anyway just wanted to point that out very quickly but now ladies and gentlemen we've covered number 13 let's go on to number 14 the final wonder that we have in Divide Eight Impera 
And so for the next one, ladies and gentlemen, we have to go all the way up and around and no, we don't. We just go straight here to the city of BAM. BAM right in your face. BAM holds the final wonder for us to check out. Uh, BAM is in the province of Carmenia. It is owned by the Asaga Asagata uh, on turn one, which is basically a Persian faction. Uh, you can see the wonder up here on the map and it is quite obviously a fortress inside the city of BAM. And this is the Argi Bam Citadel. Uh, the Citadel has only two levels, so we really we only have what one wonder that goes above two tiers, which is interesting. Um, but the second tier uh, provides 400 wealth from entertainment due to culture. That's the lowest we've seen regarding wealth uh, from culture being added. We then have minus 15 to banditry in the local province, which is very nice. Then we have minus 30% attritional losses when under siege, so that's really helpful if you're getting besieged in this city. Although, it's, I mean, it is just for here, it seems, so BAM isn't really that much of an important city, so I'm not sure how helpful that buff will be. But then you get plus 20% wealth from culture in all of your regions, plus 4 siege holdout time, plus 15% army replenishment, and plus 0.5 to your first and second social class. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the 14th wonder that we've covered. Uh, I doubt there'll be more wonders added in the future, but it is possible. And like I said, this is just in a beta, so the effects that these wonders provide are subject to change. If there are any major changes, I might even do a addendum video to give you guys a little update on what has happened. Otherwise, uh, feel free to check out the comments down below, where I'll be sure to post any major changes that you will need to see in a pinned comment at the top. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope you guys enjoyed this guide to the new wonders being added to DEI. Uh, I'm really excited for these wonders to be added into the main mod. I think it is absolutely a really positive change. It adds a little bit more immersion to the grand campaign. And of course, you guys know I'm all about that immersion. So I'm, of course, down for anything uh, new and unique being added to the mod as long as it adds to the gameplay and adds to the immersion and doesn't take away from it. And in my opinion, all of these wonders do just that. Uh, I'm sure there could be some minor balancing changes being made, so that might be nice to see. Um, but right now, I'm just excited to have wonders added in DEI. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think about the wonders being added. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? And what else would you like to see added to the Divided to Paramount? But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I shall see you in the next one.